Hello, welcome to Rosie Shack. Today, we're gonna talk about making hybrid synthetic media. We're gonna talk about actually going in and taking an AI assisted device and making a creation out of it. We're gonna talk about the chain of creation. What's gonna happen is I'm starting with an exercise from a coding class that has kind of an AI feature. I'm gonna modify it, making it a little more mine, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint a painting from it, using it as an assisted, assisted technology to create a whole painting, like one of the ones that I have behind me, only it's squares. I'm gonna show you the whole chain of creation and the chain of authorship, citing all of the influences that go into creating the painting. And in the final analysis, you're gonna see that I'm the human. So I get to change it as much as I want in the end, making it a full fine art. All right, let's make fine art with an AI. Hey, so what I've done is I've opened my pie charm. We're looking at actually the raw code from the coding exercise from 100 Days of Code. I'm gonna show you what the exercise did and what I modified it to do. So I'm a co-creator. Angela Yu is the original author of the structure of the program. She's from 100 Days of Code, and she made it paint like a hearse painting. What I'm going to show you is that I've modified it to do my 18 by 24 canvas as a 9 by 12 schematica squares, and it has caused me to be a contributor in creating the program. The program is like a tiny AI because what it does is it uses a randomization engine, randomization module to go ahead and make the painting random like as if you were looking at nature and taking nature and blowing it up. That's very important in modern art because you're supposed to look at nature when you create abstract paintings. Fine abstract paintings are supposed to be based on reality kind of. I mean, you could break that rule because you can break any rule, but but the process of creating good abstract, they have you sit there and draw reality. Here, we're gonna draw the computer, the randomization image, the randomization module, and the um, setup of the computer is gonna give us a random map that duplicates what would happen if we looked at, if we looked at nature. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it and show you what use final version looks like because I can simulate it on this and then I'm going to show you that I can I created modifiers and randomizations and color palettes that were put into it so I could go ahead and fill this exercise so let's go ahead and run it we're going to run it and it says how many dots in a line in use exercise it's 10 by 10 and I'm going to put in soft because that's the color palette I ended up with to see what it draws. Just like a hearse painting, it draws a color palette that I predefined using color palettes on pictures, and it went ahead and put it in. I've created four color palettes, so we can turn them on and off. That's my modification. I have also put in something that allows it to change dimensions so I can go ahead and do a rectangle, uh, rectangle painting. So let's go ahead and run it again. How many dots in a line? I'm gonna put nine. Oh, I'm gonna put 12, sorry. I'm gonna put 12. And how many rows in a line? I'm gonna put nine. These are my modifications. And I'm gonna put strong. And it's gonna go ahead and draw Something that is, oh, I put it wrong. Oh, how many dots in a line? I was supposed to put nine. I'm sorry. Let's rerun it. That's the beauty of this. We can stop it and rerun it. How many dots in a line? Nine. How many rows in a line? Twelve. Let's see if it did this correctly. Let's see. I might have to flip it. Yeah, this is right. So it's going to do my rectangular, um, my rectangular uh, canvas correctly, and I'm going to use this dot pattern as the randomization. 
I'm going to do something like I'm the human and I'm going to go ahead and make it squares and I might make them lighter or darker to put some contrast on the canvas to make it look right. And because I'm a human, I might use some brush strokes and some texture, but it's given me a contribution like an AI. And this one's very, very simple. It might not quite qualify as AI, but it's giving me, uh, I say it does, but it's given me something that I'm going to use from the computer as a contributor in making a real product. Let's go ahead and see what the final result looks like soon. Good morning. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go over some of the concepts that we're going that are applied in going through trying to make an, a, a fine art out of an AI. So let's see. Let's look at our chain of authorship with this. First, there's the Hearst $1.4 million painting of Dutz. I'm going to show you an example. Then coding class creates an exercise that can simulate that. Then we modify it to create our project. And finally, the artist is the computer and I, and I think I am pretty much an artist with this uh, exercise. So let's go ahead. A Hearst dot painting looks like this. Um, it's sold for $1.4 million. I don't think it was exactly this one, but um, you see that it's something that uses a pattern and uses dots as an experiment with shape and color. That's something very important. In abstract art breaks down usually reality. It can do schematics where it plays with shape, color, circles, dots, whatever. Let's see, the computer generated image is close. I applied a color palette to it so it was sensical, but the color palette plus the randomization en engines in the computer creates something like his painting and it can create 15 in like 10 minutes. So what the computer is doing in the creation, the computer is creating a randomization that replicates the detail that would come from looking at nature. It's adhering to the structure that my coding instructor, Angela Yu, and I have created inside the code. To take the class that shows you how to do this engine, you can take 100 days of code, and it's the Python boot camp from Angela Yu at Udemy. It follows the exact instruction the computer follows the exact instructions of the code, and because it creates a graphic, is considered a generative AI. What the human is doing, humans are creating the original programming. Angela, you and me, Cynthia Mock. Cynthia Mock, which is me, is providing the concept for this experiment like a producer. I conceptualized this video and wanted to show it to you. A Dami Damien Hurst provided original concept, the original concept of the painting. The human is the final decide on changing and executing the painting. So I can take what the computer says, and because I'm the human and I'm the finalizer, I can go in and change it. I can go in and change it from what the computer gives me. In abstract art, the human is using the computer to influence detail and pattern in a way that simulates and looks at a real world. The abstract art is totally abstract. Okay, keys to remember. The human can always change what the AI does. When I get it out because I'm the final person, I sit there and I can look at it, I can make a change, I can do something. In these, I might be messing with light and dark and texture to make it really look like a fine art painting. The AI should be credited appropriately. This AI is not available commercially, but I'm showing you how to get it. How you can get it is by taking 100 days of code and getting it from Angela Liu. I modified it, so I do have a right to a copyright, sort of, because I modified it enough to make sure that it is something new. Uh, and computer, programmer, computer programs are usually copyright. The AI is assisting in the pipeline and the creation of adding detail and making the production faster. The computer in our exercise created this and I'm going to go ahead and paint it as squares instead of circles because I can make a change on the AI into a whole 
18 by 24 canvas. I did 9 by 12, but I'm going to do 2 by 2 squares. And this is what I'm going to create from it. As you can see, this is our final fine art painting. I'll leave it up for a second so you can go ahead and look at it. Okay. And the question is, who is the author of the fine art? Is it different enough to say I am? I argue it is. It, it's different enough to argue that I'm the author of this painting I just showed you. But you see the whole chain of authorship leading up to something that's brand new. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and say this presentation was made by Rosie Shack and Cynthia Mock. You can read blogs and see more videos there at www.rosieshack.com. You can support our show at tiptopjar.com silver ice. And I'm going to put this final painting up for auction at Christmas. We're going to see which auction house takes it, okay?